Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 11.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be building on what we did uh, with variables in the last lesson and introducing something that you've probably played with before but maybe haven't integrated fully into your programs and that's 3D text. You can use the 3D text object that's part of the standard Alice library to put 3D text set to anything that you want. You can type any string or any phrase or any number and put that in your world. The trouble with 3D text in general is that it, it doesn't change. Maybe I want my 3D text to represent my character's name or I want it to represent uh, some variable or some value and once I put it in the world it doesn't seem like there's an easy way to change it. So today what we're going to do is add 3D text to the world Couple that with our variables and make the 3D text always represent what the variable is equal to. This becomes a great way to communicate with your user, particularly when we start making games, um, so that the user doesn't have to watch variables. This becomes useful when you're trying to do things like keep track of ammunition, maybe in uh, a first person shooter type game, or you're doing a helicopter or airplane simulator and you want to keep track of fuel. You want to keep track of those variables, you want to display those variables to your users in some kind of graphical user interface. So let's go ahead and get back to the Alice programming window and take a look at how to make 3D text reflect the value of a variable. So here we are, we've got a fresh Alice world open, and let's go ahead and add an object so that we can associate some variables with it. Click on Add Objects. And let's go to the Animals Gallery, and we're going to pick a kangaroo from the Animals Gallery. So scroll over until you see the kangaroo, and let's put that guy in the center of our screen. For now, I'm just going to have the kangaroo uh, jump, and to do that, I'll select my kangaroo, tell the kangaroo to move up half a meter, and then move down half a meter. I want him to do this several times, so I'm going to put this in a loop by adding the loop command. We'll do this five times and move our blocks of code over into our loop block. Now let's see how this looks when we run it. All right, so we have the kangaroo jumping up and down five times. And I think I'm going to put just a little bit of a wait command there at the end. So we'll have him wait half a second so that he has a chance to land before he jumps again. Perfect. Now what we're going to do, just like the last lesson, we're going to add a variable and associate it with the kangaroo. I want to keep track of how many times the kangaroo jumps. So click on the kangaroo, go to properties, and create a new variable. My variable name is going to be called jumps, not jumpus, so jumps. It's going to be a number variable, and it's going to start at a value of zero. Now, every time that the kangaroo jumps, I want to increment jumps by one. Just like in last lesson, I'm going to right click on jumps, watch this variable, and when I hit play, I can see the jumps variable is keeping track of the number of times my kangaroo jumps. So thus far, we haven't done anything different than what we did in the last lesson. Now, let's go ahead and add some 3D text to our world. So click on Add Objects, and if you've never done this before, go back to the local gallery, scroll all the way to the right, and you'll have this option called Create 3D Text. Click on that. And it will default to uh, some kind of system font, and I'm going to go to Times New Roman. So let's find Times New Roman on our list. There it is. And I'm going to have the text say kangaroo jumps. And so you use whatever font you want, whatever style you want, but let's add this 3D text to the world. And here we go, we've got kangaroo jumps as a 3D object in our world. So now let's minimize this so it all fits on one screen and raise it to the top of the screen. Oops, make sure you don't grab the ground there. Grab jumps move this over and kind of center it on the screen a little bit and maybe resize it just a little bit smaller. Perfect. So I have the 3D text, kangaroo jumps. 
And just like all of my other objects in the world, there's a number of properties. And I don't want just white, so let's go ahead and change kangaroo jumps to this blue color. And that doesn't look really good against the sky, so maybe let's try it in green. There we go, that looks okay. And so now I have kangaroo jumps as 3D text in my world. Now one thing you'll notice about 3D text is it has a property called text. This is what determines what your 3D text displays. If I were to change this to kangaroo sits, you can see that the kangaroo uh, sits is now displayed as the 3D text. So let's go ahead and change that back to jumps. And now what I want to do is add another bit of 3D text. So let's add 3D text. Pick times new Roman or whatever font you want to add. And I'm going to have this set to zero. This is going to represent the number of times the kangaroo has jumped. So I'm going to center this over the kangaroo, have it face the camera. Now let's go ahead and make this color red. So let's go to our properties, color, red, and see how this uh, animation looks right now. Now nothing's going to change, but we have the kangaroo jumping. And what I want is this 3D text to keep track of how many times the kangaroo has jumped. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is grab this text property from our 3D text too. And if it helps to keep track of this, because the default name is just 3D text, what we might want to do is rename this object to displayed jumps or, or, or something that helps us keep it separated from just the regular 3D text kangaroo jumps because this is going to change. So let's take this text property and drag it right down here and you'll see that we don't have a whole lot of options. We've got default string and other and other is any string that we want. So since I still want this to be uh, to start out at zero I'm going to go ahead and enter zero. Now I've got displayed jumps, set text to zero after we increment the number of kangaroo jumps. This works similar to like the vehicle property and all the other properties that you've used. The text, when the world starts, is set to a value of zero. And just for example, let's change this to uh, the string 15. When the world starts, text will be equal to zero. The first time this code runs through, it will get to this line and it will change the displayed jumps text property to 15. If you watch this in action, as soon as the kangaroo lands, our 3D text changes to 15, but then it remains static. The trouble is that 15 was an arbitrary number that we just typed in. It's not changing to represent anything just yet. What we want displayed jumps to do is set its text equal to the kangaroo jumps variable. The, tr the problem we're going to run into is that this jumps is an integer. When I go to drag it over to set text to, see I can't put it there. There's a big difference between string variables and integer variables or number variables, and they're not really interchangeable. Don't think of this right here as the number 15. This is, instead of 15, it's, it's like the equivalent of writing 15. It would almost be the equivalent of this right here, writing 15. What we need to do is change this number to a string so that displayed jumps can be set to that string. The way we're going to do that and the only place you can find this is in the world properties. We're looking for a function, but the function is only going to appear if you have the world selected. So make sure you have the world selected, click on the function tab, and scroll down until you see what as a string. What as a string will be able to be placed where I have this 15 now? Display jump set text to what as a string. 
Now, we can set our expression, and it's off the screen here, but you should see at the bottom, Expressions. And if you select Expressions, there will be a Kangaroo Jumps. So, I'm sorry that kind of went off the screen there, but you should see the expression in Kangaroo Jumps. Now, Displayed Jumps will be set to Kangaroo Jumps as a string. Kangaroo Jumps is this variable right here. So let's hit play and see what happens. We have zero, and now kangaroo jumps is 1.0, 3, and so on. So our 3D text now mirrors the jumps variable. That's pretty good, but I don't like having the point zero on the end. When we do what as a string, Alice will automatically take the number we give it and put a decimal on the end. Normally that's a point zero, but if we're calculating things like distance, that might get to be a really long string of numbers. So what I want to do is convert this text, this 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, so that it displays only as a single number. We can also do that. Again, this is something that we can only find in the world functions. So select the world, go to functions, and scroll down past where you found what is a string until you find int a. Int a is a function that will convert a floating point number or convert a number with a decimal point to an, a full integer, a number without a decimal point. So drag int a over to kangaroo jumps. It will then pull down the menu and select expression kangaroo jumps again. While this may look a little bit confusing, what's happening is this kangaroo jumps variable is being converted to an integer, that is a number with no decimal points. Once it's converted to a number with no decimal points, that is then being converted to a string and a string is what displayed jumps can be set, set to. 3D text has to be a string, and so we convert this decimal number to an integer, then the integer to a string, and as a string, we can set the 3D text property to whatever it is that our variable represents. When we hit play now, kangaroo jumps will always represent the number of jumps the kangaroo has made. You know, we can speed this up, you see it ends at 5, but that number will really count forever if we need it to. If I were to change the loop to an infinite loop instead of 5, and let's go ahead and kick the speed up here, we'll see that this number will count indefinitely. That variable will continue to increment as long as the kangaroo is jumping, and every time the kangaroo jumps, the 3D text property is being updated to represent the number stored in the jumps variable. So there really is a lot more to 3D text. In particular, this technique right here will come into play as we do more interactive programs. Right now, you pretty much want to practice uh, just making sure that you understand how the conversion process works. Because it is, of all the stuff we've done in Alice so far, I'd say it's one of the more difficult things. And it takes some practice to remember where everything is. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Lesson 11.2 Challenge program and see if you remember how to do this and make sure that you can do it on your own. To start off on this challenge program, we're going to use the base code for what we created in lesson 10.1, which was the car driving example using loops. If you recall back to that, we moved the vehicle small, uh, forward in small steps. It incremented by half seconds, and each time it moved forward, the car moved forward 0.5 meters, and we got an animation that looks similar to this. In order to complete this challenge program, we're going to assume that you successfully completed that project. Now, if you didn't, take a look at this code right here. This is the base code for that challenge program. If you add the station wagon to a world, 
and then add this block of code right here, you'll have a car that moves. Using this base code, we're going to add some variables to the station wagon and convert the 3D text to make kind of a display on our screen. So if you don't have this program done, go ahead and create the shell of it right here, and then we'll come back here in a second when we have it adjusted to use the 3D text. So here we are, we've made the necessary adjustments to the code now. And what I've done is I've taken the station wagon and added a variable to its object. In this case, it's a, ver a number variable starting at 100. And as I hit play, you can see each tick of this animation is subtracting one from the amount of fuel or my fuel variable. If you recall back when we made this animation in lesson 10.1, this vehicle ran on half second ticks. So essentially the fuel is decreasing at a rate of two per one second. I had this animation running in a loop that lasted 100 times. So I didn't use any if statements in this. We'll get to if statements in the next lesson. This, is, this amount of fuel just simply matches the amount of times that I'm looping the program and I did that manually. Now to put this fuel remaining uh, icon kind of on the top left, I simply went into paint, wrote fuel remaining, cropped it out, and imported this as a simple billboard. So this is just acting as a billboard right here, and then the 3D text was placed in front of it. Both the billboard and the 3D text were then sent to, set to have a vehicle property to the camera. So you don't have to worry about doing if statements. All you need to do is make sure that your starting variable is in line with the amount of times you looped this animation. One other thing that you might want to keep in mind is when you change the 3D text, it will still have a one second pause because by default, all the animations take one second. In order to make this instantaneous, like you see on this video here, set the duration of your 3D text change to zero seconds. Then it will happen instantaneously and you won't have to worry about uh, jitters in your animation or kind of the stop start effect that you might get uh, when you first start testing this program. So your job is to go back and adjust this vehicle animation that you did in lesson 10.1, giving a fuel variable to the station wagon and creating some kind of heads up display or user interface to let the user know when the animation is going to be done running. You can certainly do this in any other number of animations, maybe with a spaceship flying, or uh, think of a way that you can display some useful information to the user like we've done here, using the 3D text techniques that we talked about in lesson 11.2. As always, if you have any questions about how this program is running or why your program isn't running, you can leave those in the comments and I'll be happy to help you get your program up and running. As always, thank you so much for watching the Alice tutorial series, and have a great day.